It is 743 and Connecticut's primary election is tomorrow, believe it or not. Joining us this morning to discuss the preparations that are currently underway is Sue Larson, the president of Connecticut's Registrars of Voters Association. Sue, good morning. Good morning to you and thank you for having me. Of course. So I know you guys were probably thrown an unanticipated curveball with this tropical storm. So first question here, how are you guys uh, preparing for this? Well, uh, several years ago after Sandy and Irene, um, all the towns and cities had to put together emergency plans for situations just like this. So across the state, those um, towns and cities that are still having problems are referring back to their emergency plans um, in order to make sure that the polls are, are open for, um, for tomorrow. Um, and we've been in constant contact with the Secretary of the State's office, who, you know, again, has the governor's ear to make sure that the polling locations are considered a priority. And are there any polling locations right now that may not have power tomorrow? What's that going to look like if that's a problem? Well, if, if, as, I, um, as I said earlier, we have our individual uh, emergency plans um, that would, um, should handle that the situation. Um, some of the towns that may not have power or didn't, at, at least as of yesterday, like West, um, Westport, Tolland, um, they're referring back to their individual plans. So how each town handles it, it depends uh, totally on the individual town. So um, you'd have to give in, in those towns a call to find out the specifics. But the polls will be open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., um, whether it's done outside under a tent or um, with backup batteries, uh, whatever, the, the polls will be open. Gotcha. Good to know. And then um, if people want to know if about any changes, should they just contact their town, as you mentioned, or go on their website? How can people check for updates? Either by calling the registrar's office or um, looking on the, um, on the town's website. Um, most of the, um, the towns have updated their um, polling locations due to COVID uh, situation uh, to let um, voters know that some locations were not be, going to be able to be used because of social distancing, the fact that it's a double primary. So um, check the website, and if it's not on there, call the individual registrar's office, and they'll be able to give you the answer. Got it. And on top of this tropical storm, you just mentioned it a little bit there, but we're also dealing with this pandemic. Obviously, a lot of things different because of that. Can you talk about preparations in that light? Well, again, um, we all of the towns and cities looked at their polling locations to see whether or not um, we could actually handle a double primary and still do safe social distancing. Um, we also um, looked at what kind of um, PPE we'd need, face masks, face shields, um, the um, tapes to make um, tape or social distancing um, items that we would need, whether, you know, some, uh, some are using signs, some are using tape on the floor, all different means, but um, they're cleaning the polling locations um, today, and then the polling locations will be uh, cleaned again um, right after the primary is over, so uh, to ensure that the, um, the voters and the poll workers are safe. Good to hear that. And do you guys know how much voter turnout you're expecting, given everything that's going on right now? First time we've done uh, a mail-in process. I think all of us are pretty much um, in limbo as to how many people are actually going to physically come to the polls. We've never done anything like this. Um, some uh, towns are seeing high um, ballot returns already, and others are seeing small. So it's it really it's it, we won't know um, how to judge this until after the primary is over. All right, Sue Larson, thank you so much. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.